Okay, folks, hope you're doing well. Uh, in the spirit of things, I've decided to record this little video so that you guys will have a little something to hold on to. I can talk to you a little bit more, but really everything is explanatory in the piece. This week, we're gonna be looking at Greta Thunberg, environmental activism, the public sphere, and global media. Greta Thunberg is a really cool and interesting figure that I think we should all be looking at prior to all of this madness that's been happening in the last little bit. She has probably been one of the world figures that has garnered the most attention. Let's just jump in. So as usual, hello global media enthusiasts and social researchers. I hope that you're all managing well in these strange times, keeping your spirits up and your feather tip quills ever at the ready in the spirit of keeping pace with things and casting a critical eye on all phenomena. This week we'll explore the idea of the public sphere and the role and its role as a space within which the public and opinion on matters uh, for example, environmental justice uh, is shaped uh, since Al Gore came out with An Inconvenient Truth, uh, something that you may know uh, back in 2006. It has become one of those pieces that has helped to continue to shape public opinion in the global sphere around such issues. Uh, so we'll also discuss the role and the impact of elite media in shaping uh, opinion in the public sphere around particularly environmentalism. And in this vein, we'll explore uh, the figure of Greta Thunberg, uh, comparing uh, and contrasting ideologically opposed media critiques of her growing profile and public efforts. So there's sort of a, uh, a look at how sort of those that support her, which tend to be on the left, and to be more liberal uh, versus those that are her detractors who tend to be more on the conservative side. And you can make your way through that uh, as you wish, of course. Um, and just to keep our thread of hip hop commentary going, which I think is cool. Um, and, and, and Natalie, I'm thinking of you here, right? Um, we will sample Kanye West's decade old rant, decade and a half old rant over media and government reactions to Hurricane Katrina, right? As another way of thinking about um, reactions to and media reactions, media renderings of environmental disaster, but also to think through the African American community as a kind of internal world, another country, if you will, in a certain way within the United States, right? The third world within the United States, right? Um, we will also think through the increasingly influentially global entity that is the NGO the corporate organizational uh, vehicle through which much of this kind of activism is made possible. NGOs are really crucial. We've talked about celebrity humanitarianism in the past. They usually work through NGOs like the one that um, uh, Salma Hayek worked through to deal with tetanus and you know it was connected with Johnson & Johnson in ways. They are usually not for, for profit and they are usually non-profit, right? This focus on NGOs should really usefully inform the approach to your next proposal and project in which you analyze global media, a global media platform. So do the usual, write 450 to 500 words to get all of this together. Um, importantly, answer a minimum of two letter prompts from each section below. So I know that some of you guys will, you know, find a way to hook on to the things that you like and kind of, you know, just dabble with a couple of the articles or maybe look at the videos and kind of sometimes, you know, scrape across the surface. I really want you to get into the pieces this week. In fact, I've set it up in such a way that you literally really, really have to read into the pieces and draw quotes from them because there's not as many videos this week. Creatively title and subtitle your piece so as to attract comments from your peers. Let's move on. So in the new public sphere, I want you to think through Manuel Castells, who by the way is um, a very prominent figure in thinking through media and communications. He came up with the notion of the network society, which is a piece a piece of work and a set of thinking that is, um, has been um, well and sort of thoroughly, um, has really entered into sort of communications theory very closely, Manuel Castells. Um, he has written the piece, The New Public Sphere, so I want you to think through in terms of definition, what is the public sphere? How has it become global? What is the global civil society? How is the rise of the internet and social media? How is that implicated in the emergence of a global public sphere? 
Um, according to Castells, uh, what are NGOs? What roles have NGOs come to play in the global civil society? What influence do these organizations have in the public sphere? And how are NGOs different from traditional political parties or governments? And now importantly, to keep the spirit of critique going, um, how, according to Castells, are social movements implicated in the global civil society? How do they influence the global public sphere? But here, in terms of critical thinking, while it is clear that NGOs aim to do good around the world, how might they also be read as culturally imperialist, right? So I want you to think through not just all the great Disney World stuff about NGOs, you know, we've been through that conversation already, but how might they also be read as culturally imperialist in a way? And I think you guys would have a lot of ideas about that. Section two. Greta Thunberg, who is Greta Thunberg or Thunberg and how has she become the global figure that she is now recognized as? How does she access, mobilize in the global public sphere fair to effect, articulate, agitate for environmental ecological justice? What is unique about Thunberg as compared to other notable climate activists? So what is unique about this individual? How has Thunberg uh, become the contemporary face of global climate activism? How are the slogans, we don't have time and our house is on fire related to Thunberg's efforts? Draw quotes from the links below to enrich your discussion. And so that first link, The Intercept, has a very interesting video attached to it. I want you to take in that video, draw quotes from that video, uh, get a real sense of who this young individual is if you don't know her or her work already, and use that to critically an analyze the figure and the person and her work and to think through how is she unique, right? How is she unique? While Tenberg has managed in a rev relatively short time to amass significant support and through her useful youthfulness to draw attention toward her cause, critics of environmentalism have set about to debunk what they believe is the nonprofit industrial complex, arguing that Thunberg is but a puppet of more insidious capitalist forces. So that's a pretty challenging set of ideas. First is uh, this use of the term nonprofit industrial complex, as in military industrial complex, as in white savior industrial complex, as in pro uh, prison industrial complex, complex, so this idea of industrial complex and what does it refer to when people start to use the term industrial complex. Um, one such critic of Thunberg's is Corey Morning Morningstar, who's recently published The Manufacturing of Greta Thunberg for Consent, attempts to make this case. You're hearing the words here, the manufacturing of, and this idea of for consent. Who does that invoke? Who does that evoke? What is that evocative of for you? Uh, given what you've learned of Thunberg, what do you make of Morningstar's critique of environmentalism and of Thunberg's place in it? What is Morningstar's argument, really? What is the central argument? Does it resonate with you? How would you respond to Morningstar? And compare and contrast Morningstar's, Morningstar's title with the titles of other major books written about Thunberg thus far. So I put together a little PDF myself. I had to copy and paste it from Amazon to create it. So take a good look at that. Look at the, the look at the title of Morningstar's piece and look at the titles of another five or six books that have come out about Thunberg right now and think through, you know, compare and contrast them. What side do you fall on, okay? Um, okay, so moving right along. Um, author Helen Beltram Lynn attempts to unpack or explain uh, turn, the Thunberg phenomenon or the Greta effect, as some have referred to it. The author gives Thunberg's passion regional context. She talks a lot about Sweden and what does it mean for Thunberg to come from Sweden and why is she so unique or different? What is it about Sweden as a space that has created the persona that is Thunberg? Um, and I think it's interesting because we've thought about Latin America, we've thought about Africa, we've thought about India. Here we are getting an opportunity to think about Europe itself, a very particular part of Europe with a very particular sort of economic and social system, right, that allows for a Thunberg to sort of emerge. So I want you to think through that. Um, so Greta Thunberg as a social product of Sweden. Um, so how has elite media framed Thunberg, uh, the Thunberg era of climate activism? From what you can tell, has the elite media acted as climate watchdogs, as corporate lapdogs, or establishment guard dogs, in your opinion? Have they supported environmental causes? 
kowtowed to capitalist interests or protected the status quo. And so you're going to use Boykoff and Ludek to make your case. So from all of these, please, you know, draw quotes. I've asked you to, to, to answer a minimum of two from each section. Um, so that's just a bit. That's two out of four in the first section, two out of five in the second section. That's just a, a bit of each of those sections. So do draw quotes, right? Draw the quotes to enrich your opinion. I want you to draw quotes. They're not hard to find. I've actually highlighted some parts of the articles for you. And then finally, Natalie and the hip hop listeners in the class, I know you're all hip hop listeners in some way or another, right? You should be, right? George Bush don't like black people, <laughs> right? Kanye West, uh, crazy guy that he is, uh, critically analyzed and contextualized rapper Kanye West's cryptic strident statement made during a telethon for her, her Hurricane Katrina relief in 2005. Given the context, is Kanye West making any sense here? Does he ever make any sense? Uh, off record? or only on record, does he make sense? It's up to you. Um, take a look at that as a bonus section. I'm sure you all are gonna wanna wade into that at some point. I've used Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth here as an additional optional resource. Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth is probably the defining documentary that sort of has really ushered in the most recent decade of environmental activism after he lost the election to George Bush that he was supposed to have won. Um, uh, many thought. Um, he quickly turned heel and became this global environmental activist. In fact, no one is, it, prior to Thunberg, no one is more famous or celebrated or recognized or there's no figure that is larger than Al Gore and his inconvenient truth um, prior to sort of Thunberg, who's also who's only very recent. Um, it's available for rent, two ninety nine on Amazon. I have contacted the library about making it available to you. Um, otherwise, um, but check it out this weekend. It only costs two ninety nine. Um, and let's think through uh, environmental activism and global media. Stay healthy. Stay of sound mind and body. And write me up a storm. And let's think about um, everything that we have for this week. Peace.